Bulky heads, barrel-like bodies, and tank-busting teeth all define the most typical and most well-known Tyrannosaurians, and with this combination of features, were easily some of the planet's most potent ever predators. Within this group, though, there were some deviations from this body plan, and they came in the form of the Aloe Romani, the long-snouted Tyrannosaurians. The holotype of what would become Elia Ramus, the namesake of the tribe, was discovered by a joint Soviet-Mongolian expedition to the Gobi Desert in the 1970s, with them being found at a locality known as Nogan Sav in the Nemect Formation. The specimen consisted of a partial skull alongside three metatarsals, and possessed some unusual features that made the specific classification difficult for the longest time. Aliaramus was a puzzling taxa, with the fragmented holotype appearing to represent a long snouted and gross soul predator with an extreme degree of cranial ornamentation, although details of its anatomy, biology, and phylogenetics proved to be controversial. The five prominent crests on the nasal bones alongside the low skull profile look so different from other Tyrannosaurids that the describer of the finds, believing his find to be far removed from other members of the family, gave them the generic name of Aliaramus, meaning other branch, and the specific name Remotus, which means removed in Latin in 1976. Difficult to interpret and poorly described due to its fragmentary nature and difficulties in gaining access to it for study, Aliaramus would remain poorly understood for over 30 years. Initial phylogenetic analysis on A. remotus placed them deep within the radiation of Asian Tyrannosaurids, whereas other studies found them as a basal taxon outside of Tyrannosauridae. Furthermore, after it was found that the holotype represented a juvenile animal, some authors also suggested that they may have been an immature Tarbosaurus, which also inhabited the same region and at the same time. The skull itself was approximately 45cm long, with it being long and low, being a shape more typically found in more basal tyrannosauroids and juveniles of larger tyrannosaurids. The nasal bones were also fused and ornamented with a row of five irregular bony crests that protrude upwards from the midline where the nasals are sutured together, with these crests measuring more than 1cm long, likely being a display structure in life. Another species of Elioramus was described in 2009 that helped to clear up a lot of the mystery surrounding the genus, in large part because of how complete it was. Much of the skeleton was preserved, with there being a nearly complete skull and neck, as well as large segments of the back, sacrum and tail. A nearly complete pelvis and most of the hind limbs were also present. A histological analysis done on several of the hind limb elements indicates that, like the holotype of Elioramus remotus, this animal was a subadult at around 9 years of age. Its body size, however, conformed more closely to 7 to 8 year old Albertosaurus or Gorgosaurus, and a 5 to 6 year old Dasplesosaurus or Tyrannosaurus, among which their growth curves have been established. Thus, the animal being smaller than other Tyrannosaurids at a similar age suggests they would have attained a smaller adult size than these other, more robust animals. This specimen was given the name of Elioramus Altai, after the nearby Altai Mountains, with it being collected in 2001 at the Sagan Kushu locality, also from the Nemex Formation, where the remains of A. Remotus were found. A. Altai is distinguished by the authors of the paper from Remotus, which is also at approximately the same ontogenetic stage judging by the slight 3% difference in the reconstructed skull length of the two specimens, as well as subtle differences in the skull like them having three less developed rugosities on the nasal, as opposed to the six more prominent ones in Remotus. Altai also possess 17 maxillary and 20 dentary alveoli, 16 and 18 respectively in Remotus, something big giving the seemingly same age stage they both represent. As mentioned earlier, the completeness of the find also helped to resolve some taxonomic and biological uncertainties about them, and that Aliaramus was indeed a distinct genus, and one with a very unique body plan that had big implications for their niche and how they operated. A phylogenetic analysis conducted in the same paper describing Aeolti, which would later be supported by further studies, found them to be deeply nested within the Tyrannosauridae, as well as in the Tyrannosaurian subfamily that includes Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Displetosaurus being more closely related to these taxa than they were to Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. However, among this derived group, Aliaramus is very unusual, with them having very elongate, grey soul skulls, as well as numerous horn-like ornaments on their nasals. Subtle details of the neurovascular foramina, alongside extensive skeletal pneumaticity, the presence of air spaces within bones were also preserves in immaculate detail, more so than in any other known Tyrannosaurid specimen. Tyrannosaurids as a whole generally exhibits a greater degree of pneumaticity than other theropods, with all of the normal pneumatic recesses being present in Aliaramus. 
What is especially interesting is that the greatest degree of skeletal pneumaticity in a Tyrannosaurid is present in one of the smaller and more gross old taxa. This appears to argue against the hypothesis that such pneumaticity is correlated with body size and primarily being an adaptation to weight reduction. Instead, pneumaticity may be exceptionally variable among individuals or may decrease throughout ontogeny. Indeed, an ontogenetic decrease is seen in Allosaurus and juvenile Tarbosaurus specimens also exhibit vertebral pneumatic features not seen in adults. The skull is lightly built, with the upper jaw notably being more than five times longer than it is deep, above the antorbital fenestra, an extraordinary ratio otherwise only seen in spinosaurids, the small basal tyrannosaurid, Zhong Guanglong, and a few celerosaurs among theropods. The ventral margin of the maxilla is also nearly straight, and not as deeply convex as in most tyrannosaurids. The fused and vaulted nasals also lack the processes that projects onto the lacrimal in Tyrannosaurus. The brain case is also well preserved, and sutures between most of the bones were noted to be visible. A digital cast of the intracranial cavity, cranial nerve roots and inner ears revealed a series of basal and derived features. For example, based on horizontal, lateral, semicircular canal, Aoltai held their heads in a slightly downturned position when alert. Said angle of this alert position is slightly greater than the nearly horizontal orientation of non celerosaurian theropods, e.g. Majungasaurus, but less so than the strongly downward orientation of many raptorans, including birds, indicating that the brain case of Aleoramus was intermediate between more basal theropods and avulans. Modifications for draw strengthening are seen in large tyrannosaurids, such as the fusion of post-entry bones and interlocking ridges and grooves, were absent in them, indicating that the method of feeding and internal predation was quite different. The massive skulls of tyrannosaurids, alongside their peg-like teeth, strongly interlocking lower jaws, and deep muscle attachment sides, coupled with evidence from bite marks and coprolites, alongside other analyses, appears to show that they employed a puncture pull feeding style in which the teeth could crunch through bone and in turn tearing off large pieces of flesh. Aleoramus lacks many of the cranial adaptations required for such a strategy, such as a deep skull, robust bones or interlocking structures, indicating that they had a different way of feeding, likely focusing on smaller prey due to their more gracile bills. Their bills was also more lean overall than the contemporary Tarbosaurus, and while it is currently impossible to say how short the legs of Aleoramus would have become as they became adults, due to all specimens thus far being juveniles, the fact that the legs of Aoltai still maintains the more gross proportions at the stage when their overall growth would be slowing down suggests that they were consistently quick and nimble across their lifespan when compared to other medium to larger members of their family. It is possible, therefore, that this difference in bills allowed them to fill in a different ecological niche than Tarbosaurus, which better allow them to coexist and to specialise in preying on different animals. Regarding Tarbosaurus, because both specimens of Aleoramus represent young individuals, they were regarded at one time as potential juvenile forms of this other genus. They do share similar skull features, including a locking mechanism in the lower jaw between the dentary and angular bones, as well as a row of bumps on the nasal bones, although these were much lower and less defined than in Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus, however, possessed many more characters that group it closer to Tyrannosaurus, and therefore the minimal characteristics shared between the two were down to convergent evolution and them both being Tyrannosaurians, despite looking comparatively different. Specimens representing juvenile Tarbosaurus have also been found from a similar age range to Aleoramus, that shows that they did look quite different proportionally, with juvenile Tarbosaurus having a deeper maxilla and lower tooth count. The more prominent crest in Aleoramus, coupled with evidence that the skull bones had begun to fuse together, meaning that they were already reaching their full size, lends further support to them being distinct. Aleoramus was already smaller and more slender than comparably aged tyrannosaurs, with well-studied growth series in other dinosaur taxa showing that ornamentation increases throughout ontogeny, suggesting that the dull Aleoramus may have been even more elaborate in regards to their horns and rugosities. They were still fairly large animals, with them likely exceeding lengths of 6 metres and weighing around 385 kilograms regarding Aeolti and 500s for Aeromotus. They were known from the Mongolian Nemex Formation, which was once a humid floodplain around 70 million years ago, right near the ends of the Cretaceous. The diversity and the true distinctiveness of Aleoramus would be further exemplified by the discovery and description of another genus, Chiantusaurus sinensis, also known by the nickname Pinocchio rex, which would lead to the formation of a new and divergent tribe of Tyrannosaurids, the Aleoramini. Named from Chiansu, an ancient name of Ganjo where the fossils were discovered, the specimen was well preserved and nearly complete, 
with a nearly complete skull, with most of the lower jaw, vertebrae, partial ilia, and the left hind limb all being described. The skull itself is 90cm long, with them overall being estimated to have been 6.3m long and 757kg in weight, making them a fair bit larger than the two specimens of Eleoromus. Being more mature than both of them, Chiansusaurus still does not appear to be fully grown, as the neurocentral sutures between the dorsal and cervical vertebrae are only partially fused. Their skull closely resembled the two Aleoroma species, and alongside other similarities, the tribe Aleoromani was created to account for these divergent Tyrannosaurians, and that they were indeed a distinct and basal grouping. It has been suggested that the Chiansusaurus type specimen is a more mature member of either Aeolsai or Aeromotus, both of them also having been suggested to be lumpable as well, although because they possess traits not seen in the holotype of these species, as well as being found at a geographically disparate locality, they are currently recognised as distinct, although debate is still ongoing, and further discoveries and descriptions will best attest this hypothesis. Chiansusaurus was discovered in similar age rocks approximately 3,000 kilometres southeast of the Demex formation in the Jiangxi province of China. This discovery shows that these long snouted carnivores were geographically widespread across Asia during the end stages of the Cretaceous, and formed an important but until recently unknown and overlooked component of terrestrial ecosystems during the time that they were around. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.